Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about um, raw LoRa, um, um, meaning using a chip like this, which is a SX1276 a UART type chip to send um, LoRa messages to a similar chip. Um, you know, uh, um, frameworks like Mestastic build applications around this raw technology but um, you can actually just use a, a chip like this and build your own software that goes over LoRa. Um, so one way to communicate with this chip is to just put a, a serial to USB um, converter on there, something like this. And what that basically does is um, you can then uh, interact with it. And I'll put on the screen how you can interact with this thing. Um, it's basically four wires, 3.3 uh, uh, volts ground, receive and transmit. And you connect it up to this. And if you look at the screen, you'll see once connected, you set the board rate and, and all of that. And then you can send a, uh, you connect, and then you can send a simple command like AT. And this chip, since um, it's, it's exposed as serial, um, will respond with a OK. Um, but there's more commands that you can send to this chip. Um, so you can use something like this um, and that you plug into your USB port and you can talk to this serial uh, uh, chip using the serial protocol. And I'll, and I'll uh, 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 show some more detail on how to connect that. But um, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to connect that uh, chip up to a ESP32 microcontroller. Um, so this microcontroller um, you know, um, I'm loading circuit Python on there, and I'm using a really inexpensive one. It's this ESP32 Room or whatever, really cheap chip. I could have used these smaller ones like uh, the Seed Studio uh, ESP32 chips, or even uh, um, anything that can run circuit Python. Really, could do that. Um, but um, I'm, I've got two of them, so I got two of these ESP32 connected to two of these uh, LoRa chips. And the plan is to uh, communicate between the two. So let me show you what, what, what I want to do uh, here on the, on the PC quickly. Okay, so the plan here is, as you can see, we've got uh, the ESP32 that's connected to the LoRa chip um, via serial. And I've loaded uh, um, um, Circuit Python onto that chip. Now I have a video, and I'll put the link to that, so um, it's very easy to load Circuit Python onto these ESP32 chips. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, have two of these, um, and I'm going to communicate between these two chips using LoRa. And uh, you know the potential distance between these two can be miles. Um, because it's LoRa um, connection between the two. So um, the idea is then um, that uh, we can send data between these. And now this is not Mestastic, but you know, on the outside of these, I could connect sensors to one of them, and um, I could even connect Mestastic, a Mestastic node to the other uh, uh, ESP32 to send out messages to Mestastic if I wanted to. Or, uh, but this video is really about the raw communication between these two. So once you connected one of these ESP32s serially to uh, one of these LoRa chips, um, you can send AT commands. Like I showed earlier, you can say AT and it says OK. But um, there are more. Uh, you know, I can say AT plus VER, a question mark, and that's asking the chip, what version are you? That's a command you can send. I can set the actual band of these. I can set them to um, uh, you know, 915 or 868. Um, as you know, uh, LoRa runs over 906, or, or Mestastic, the default is 906.875, I think. That's the actual uh, 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 frequency of a band that um, uh, uh, Mestastic chose. But uh, you, know, you can set the, each one of these to their own uh, um, to their own band. And then uh, you can create, uh, uh, each one of these can have its own node address. 
and that is, um, you know, uh, 80 plus address equals, I'll call one 120, I'll call the other one 121, but I can have hundreds of those nodes, each has its own address. And then each can have, uh, 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 they all can have uh, its own network ID, meaning I can have 10 on one network and that would be network 6 and 10 would be on another network that can be network 7 so I can completely segregate them like that into uh, networks and inside those networks are those addresses so in this example 6 uh, 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 sorry 120 is the address of uh, the specific node and 6 is the ID of the network and I can have hundreds of networks and hundreds of nodes connected to each one of those networks. So, um, and then uh, to send data would be something like the last command there, send equals to which node, so, you know, since one of them is 120 and I made the other one's address 121, I could say send to 121 15 characters and the 15 characters is hello receiver, exclamation mark. That's 15 characters. If that 121 was a zero, it would send it to everybody. So that would be like a broadcast. So I could say 80 plus send equals to which node address on the network that I'm on, in this case 6. So I'm on network 6, send to node 121, 15 characters that says hello receiver. So now you can build software around this and that would be received by the receiving node. So let me, um, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, this allows for really nice things. You can have separate networks, you can have nodes per network, and you can apply your own encryption. And that's what Mastastic's done, is they, uh, uh, on top of these messages, they included their own encryption. You know, so now you can, since you can send text over uh, uh, the, the, to each other, you can encrypt that and decrypt them on the ends. So there's so much you can do with this. But this is an easy way to send data for miles between two, um, to, between two computers or between two, much further than Bluetooth would go or much further than Wi-Fi would go. This could potentially be miles apart. So uh, hopefully that makes sense, the theory behind it. Okay, so um, what I've done now, let me just make sure that I can get this in, uh, in focus. Um, so what I've done now is I've connected uh, my ESP32 to which I have a chip. I've connected it to, uh, um, um, I've loaded CircuitPython and this is Thorny. I, I've, I have videos on Thorny. Again, I'll put the links in there. Uh, but it basically allows you to um, write in, in Python, very simple application. So if we look at this application, I plugged it in, I stopped it. Um, I broken into the circuit Python um, as Thorny or circuit Python works the application called code.py will be the first thing that it runs if we load that off this ESP32 this is the program that we have we're just setting up some pins this is a pretty default stuff and this code will be in the blog post on the website um, so we're breaking uh, breaking out the pins we set up a communication with this chip at 115. 200 board, uh, we're setting up the perns, um, then I have a, a, we uh, uh, have a LED because these boards have a built-in LED, so I'm going to show that and um, then I'm going to break into, you, you know, here's a function called send command and that's sending something and then here's a function called setup LoRa module and here I'm going to start sending those commands. So the first thing I'm going to send to the chip is what's your version? what band are you on, then I'm going to set its address to 120 and then I'm going to set its network ID to 6 and then I'm just going to put another 80 in there. Um, so that's what happens in this LoRa setup. Uh, uh, so it first runs, if we run main, it does the LoRa setup, then it waits 10 seconds, then it starts sending the command 80 plus sent to node 121, hello receiver the 15, uh, uh, um, 15 characters. So, um, so it's going to do that and then it sleeps for five seconds. So it's just going to keep uh, sending that. So the, 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 if we look at the main, the, the, what happens on this one, and I call this the sending node, just in this example, 
It starts up, it sets up the LoRa module by sending the version, checking the version, checking the band, setting the address to 120, setting the, uh, 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 that's the uh, um, um, address of a specific node, setting the network, I call it network six, I could have called it anything, um, and then from there running this um, uh, um, continuous send every 10, or oh, wait 10 seconds and then start sending every five seconds, sending hello receiver, hello receiver, hello receiver. So if I run this program, we can see there's the first command that goes, 80 plus ver, and we see it's on 915, the chip was currently set to 915. I've set its address, I've set its network ID, and I've sent an AT just to make sure everything's still okay. It's still um, uh, 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 processing at the moment, the chip's getting ready. Um, then I'm gonna wait 10 seconds and then I'm gonna try my first send command and I got no response there. And now we wait, uh, we can see that didn't work. I try, wait five seconds and there I got an okay. So the first send to node 121, um, hello receiver has been sent out. So sometimes they work, sometimes they're not, depends if a chip is uh, uh, ready to send or not. But that's really what this uh, node does. And at the same time, you can see that I've set it to flash the LED. There's a little, um, uh, uh, yeah, that says turn the LED on when you send and turn it off when you finish sending. We can see the LED is flashing. So you can see sometimes it sends the message, sometimes it doesn't because I'm just doing it in a loop, um, uh, um, you know, in any case. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this specific chip and I'm just going to go put it onto its own power, not connected to a PC because this is circuit Python. This chip is going to start up this ESP32 and like we just saw, it's going to initialize the LoRa chip and then it's going to go through, um, you know, every five seconds sending out the message. So let me do that now. I'm going to go plug this into a, uh, into a USB port somewhere and get it going. Okay, um, so I uh, went and plugged that guy in uh, into a power source. I can see it way over there. It's flashing, sending a message every five seconds to node 121. So um, I'm going to plug this guy in, which is the second one, the second uh, uh, LoRa. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, and ESP32 combination. I'm going to plug that right guy in and let's uh, hit stop there and uh, go see what code is in this one. Now this one I call it the receiving node, but they both can send and receive. But in this example, I'm just using this one as the receiving node. So again, I start it up. I set up my, US, uh, my serial bus to 115 and um, this has got a, 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 it's got a send command and then it's got a LoRa setup, but it, then it's also got this wait for incoming data. So what this one does, it virtually the same thing. It's, uh, you know, when the LoRa initializes, it's going to ask the version, then it's going to set the band uh, or, or ask what the band is and it's going to be 915. Then this one I will set it to uh, address 121. Remember, the other one was 120, so this one's 121. Um, and um, uh, and you can, if you can remember the, 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 the message that I sent, I sent it to node 121. And then I'm also going to make it part of network 6. The other one was also on network 6. This one's on network 6. But again, I can have many networks with many nodes on each network. Okay, so um, this is uh, um, address 121 on network number 6. And um, I'm going to uh, basically just uh, initialize the chip with those commands, this LoRa chip with those commands. And then I am going to um, basically at that point uh, um, start reading the data. So if I run this on this one, you can see the version command went through. I'm asking what band. It's also on 915. So they're both on 915. And we can actually see responses already being received there. But I set the network ID to six. I set uh, um, the 121 address. And there we can see the chip responds with data it's receiving from the other node. And as we know, the, the, the first node, I set it to every five seconds, 
send out the message called hello receiver. But that message could have been anything. It could have been data from a sensor or data from a lot of things. Uh, um, and, um, and then uh, um, that data is then transferred. But I could, uh, you know, base64 encode and encrypt the data and uh, then decrypt it on this side. There's just so many things. But this gives me a programmatic channel between the two nodes, which potentially could be miles away. These last two numbers is just the RSSI and the signal to noise ratio. So we can see they, you know, minus 68 and 30. Um, so you have that exactly what's exposed in, in, in Mestastic. You can see exactly this that we're seeing here. But, uh, I think Mestastic, though, they prefer a SPI interface, not a zero interface. But it, it's built around the same principle. So, um, so in theory, then, we have a node over there that's busy uh, as, a, as a circuit Python application that could have done almost anything, you know, read a sensor or read some data or uh, uh, anything, then take that data and send it to this node, which could be miles from that node, and this node would receive it, and we can see the data. And this node, of course, could be sending data back to the other node. Um, all of that's possible. And we can have many networks and we can have many nodes per network. You can see how this thing can scale to huge, huge amounts. But that's basically it. That's um, what I would call raw LoRa communication between uh, two nodes, um, which is really the fundamentals of what, you know, Mestastic and, and everything's built on, on this raw technology of sending um, data uh, across, um, you know, LoRa networks. They all use these SX1262 or, or so LoRa chips that communicates and then they turn it into either zero or SPI into a, a, a computer. And that's really what a Haltec V3 is. It's an ESP32 computer with the Mestastic software on there that then just uses this radio to uh, send the data. And, uh, you know, they decide, you can decide what the frequency of a band is, and you can decide the address, and you can decide the, the, uh, the network. There's just so much you can do. But that's uh, just my little thing on raw LoRa communication. And um, you can apply this to a nice IoT network where you can read sensors miles from here and get the data to a central point. Uh, you know, because you can have many nodes sending data to one receiving node and then programmatically you can do almost anything. So hopefully that makes sense and uh, thank you for uh, watching.